Hello viewers, welcome to the channel Amazing Civil Engineering Studies. In today's video we are going to discuss about what is curing. Method of curing of concrete. In all concrete structure, curing plays an important role. The durability of concrete also depends on the curing of concrete and its different methods. The curing is maintaining the temperature of concrete during the hydration period of concrete. Cracks of concrete also depend on proper methods of curing. Therefore in this article, we discuss what is curing the advantages of curing, disadvantages of curing, best methods of curing, the period of curing and so more. What is curing? Curing is defined as the method which maintains the temperature and loss of moisture of the fresh concrete during the period of hydration of concrete or hardening period of concrete. Due to curing the durability of concrete and hardened strength of concrete is increase. Curing is totally dependent on different methods of curing. By the proper method use of curing also reduces shrinkage cracks of concrete. Curing is the maintaining of adequate moisture content and temperature in concrete at an early age so that it could develop properties the mixture was designed to achieve. Curing begins immediately after finishing and placement so that the concrete can develop the desired durability and strength. Without an adequate supply of moisture, the cementitious materials in concrete can't react to form aqualite product. Drying can remove the water needed for this chemical reaction called hydration, and the concrete won't achieve its potential properties. Temperature is an important factor in proper curing, since the rate of hydration, and therefore, strength development is faster at higher temperatures. Generally, the concrete temperature should be maintained above 50 degrees Fahrenheit, 10 degrees Celsius, for an adequate rate of strength development. Why curing of concrete is important? Or what does curing in concrete structure? Curing maintains the moisture in the concrete surface due to that hydration process of concrete properly done. Curing maintains the moisture losses due to evaporation and keeps required moisture on concrete surfaces. Shrinkage cracks are reduced by using the proper method of curing. Compressive strength increases by doing proper curing. Hardness of concrete depends on curing. The curing is also important for maximum strength of concrete. Predictable strength gain. Laboratory tests show that concrete at a dry environment can lose up to 50% of its potential strength in comparison to similar concrete that's moist cured. Concrete placed under high temperature conditions will gain early strength quickly, but later strengths may be reduced. Concrete placed in cold weather will take longer to gain strength, delaying form removal, and subsequent construction. 
Improved durability. Well cured concrete has a better surface hardness and can withstand surface wear and abrasion. Curing also makes concrete more watertight, which prevents moisture and waterborne chemicals from entering into the concrete, thus increasing durability and service life. Better serviceability and appearance. A concrete slab that's been allowed to dry out too early will have a soft surface with poor resistance to wear and abrasion. Proper curing reduces crazing, dusting, and scaling. Methods of curing Covering concrete surface with wet gunny bags. This is a widely used method of curing, particularly for structural concrete. Dry gunny bags are attached or applied on concrete surfaces like beam columns. Water spray on gunny bags is applied on a concrete surface at the interval for a short period of time. The interval of water should be proper so the gunny bag's surface is not dried. Amethyst is most suitable for columns, beams, and slabs. Ponding method this is the best method of curing. It is suitable for curing horizontal surfaces such as floors, roof slabs, road, and airfield pavements. The horizontal area is thus divided into a number of rectangles. After 24 hours the temporary ponds are created on a horizontal concrete surface by a thin mortar wall, 5 cm height, on a periphery of rectangular. The water is filled between the ponds. The filling of water in these ponds is done twice or thrice a day depending upon the atmospheric conditions. In this method water requirements are very high. Sprinkling of water Sprinkling of water continuously on the concrete surface provides an efficient curing. It is mostly used for curing floor slabs. The concrete should be allowed to set sufficiently before sprinkling is started. The spray can be obtained from a perforated plastic box. On small jobs sprinkling of water may be done by hand. Vertical and sloping surfaces can be kept continuously wet by sprinkling water on top surfaces and allowing it to run down between the forms and the concrete. For this method of curing the water, requirement is higher. Membrane curing these methods prevent the loss of mixing water from the surface of the concrete. In this method of curing use emulsion of liquid membranes such as bitumen and asphaltic emulsion, rubber latex emulsion, resins, varnish, waxes and so more which act as a barrier by making a thin surface of the concrete so that the moisture does not dissipate. This method can be done to cover concrete surfaces horizontally and vertically and also do for both surfaces. Sometimes concreting is carried out at remote places where there might be an acute shortage of water. This method of curing does not need constant supervision. 
A large amount of water required for the water curing method is not possible for economic reasons too. Steam curing Steam curing method is best for precast concrete work. Because this method requires a special temperature condition which is easily maintained in the laboratory. In this method strength gain of concrete is accelerated, by supplying heat and additional moisture to the concrete. When concrete is subjected to higher temperature, it accelerates the hydration process and hence resulting in faster development of strength. In the steam curing method, the concrete work is placed inside the chamber or room. Then the operator set the suitable temperature and humidity level by the control panels. The heat and moisture penetrate in the materials quickly hence hydrate the concrete fully and harden them. Steam curing and hot water curing is sometimes adopted. What should we do during curing? And what should we not do during curing? Concrete is strong enough to withstand the load of a man walking on it, immediately starting curing to prevent drying of freshly burned concrete. In the summer and heavy winds, sprinkling water remotely, far away from concrete, until the curing begins. Use portable water for the purpose of curing. Not move on fresh concrete work for curing purposes. Curing is continuously done until the cracks are developed in concrete works. If curing is not done properly then the concrete decreases its strength and due to that concrete becomes weak. What is the minimum and maximum curing period? Normal weather condition minimum or at least 7 DAYS for ordinary Portland cement construction. Minimum or at least 10 days for blended cement, PPC, PSC, construction. Hot weather condition, temperature more than 40 degrees Celsius. Minimum or at least 10 days for ordinary Portland cement construction. Minimum or at least 14 days for blended cement, PPC, PSC, construction. What is impact of late curing on construction? Three days delayed curing reduces 12% strength of 7 days strength and 10% of 28 days strength. The delay of curing had a harmful effect on concrete and the first day of delay caused the largest effect. Curing after delaying increased the compressive strength of concrete but it did not recover the reduction in strength caused by the curing delay. Thanks for watching. For now, please subscribe, like, share and do not forget to press bell icon.